Welcome back. Kenya Airways has embarked on a radical plan to cut costs as management looks to turn around fortunes of the struggling carrier. The airline, which recently reported a full-year loss of 116 million U.S. dollars, and it's a, is in advanced stages in its sale of assets, including land and planes, in a bid to draw down the second tranche of its $200 million bridge and loan in the next one month as part of a broader plan to pull the carrier back from financial doldrums. Kenya Airways expects to report an improvement in operating profit and narrower losses for the year ending in March because of savings made by reducing the size of its fleet and lower fuel costs. The airline, one of Africa's biggest carriers, is also considering cutting the number of staff after a review of staffing needs. Kenya Airways, which is 26.7% owned by Air France KLM, reported a pre-tax loss of $293 million for its financial year to end of March 2015, the third straight year of losses. But losses narrowed in the six months to September. We are still in debt, clearly. Um, we have we drew, we told you last year, we were looking for $200 million in terms of uh, bridge money to allow us to uh, have working capital in order to prepare the long-term capital structure of the business. We drew $100 million mid last year. We are about to draw the second $100 million to allow us to, um, to, to uh, have flexibility, flexibility in the business today and also to allow the creditor position to reduce. The airline expects to receive the second $100 million tranche of its $200 million bridging loan from Cairo-based Afraxin Bank within a month. We already made uh, decisions around aircraft. So today, you know, we've sold 777-200s, two of them, they're out of the network. The 777-300s, we are subleasing those. Uh, we are subleasing another 2787. So all those actions have been taken. Those are painful decisions in a business. Um, people decisions are much more sensitive. And the thing about people decisions, it's not that you can just make a casual approach to them. We have to make, as part of the holistic view of the plan, uh, a solid review of where do we need to take reductions, what sort of quantum do we need, what's the impact of that, and how do we finance it. The airline still offered almost the same number of available seats per kilometer with fewer planes. According to the CEO, flights to West Africa were seeing higher demand as Ebola cases have come to an end in the region, adding that he was confident of a rise in tourist numbers to Kenya. There's a mixed bag in terms of passenger demand. What I see is that uh, there's a sense of stability coming back in Africa, having seen some uh, reduced numbers in uh, uh, last year, particularly into West Africa, where Ebola, uh, where we had the Ebola issues. Tourism is still taking time to pick up, but it will come back. And I think there's opti I, am, I am optimistic about the possibility the possibilities going ahead. A series of Islamic militants' attacks in Kenya has hurt the country's tourism industry, cutting into the airline's revenue right after it bought expensive modern airplanes. The carrier has also cited rising debts due to new plane purchases and competition from Gulf carriers for their losses. And the luxury SUV drives to the front of the markets at the New York International Auto Show as car makers roll out the newest wares. Ford Motor Company CEO Mark Fields on Wednesday talked about the automaker's investment strategy at the New York International Auto Show where the company showed off a concept, Lincoln Navigator SUV. Since 2011, Ford has invested over $10 billion in U.S. facilities and hired more than 25,000 U.S. workers. Ford plans to invest another $9 billion in the United States in the next four years. We're off to the strongest sales start to the year that Lincoln has enjoyed in eight years and our strongest SUV sales in 15 years. Fiat Chrysler's premium Maserati brand is developing a semi-automated driving system for its new Levante utility vehicle that would also likely find its way into the company's Ghibli and Porto Port sedan in the next two years. The Levante, which just went into production in Italy in late February as the brand's first ever SUV, 
won't reach U.S. dealers until fall, about three years later than originally forecast by FCA chief executive. Well, big luxury really brings profits to these luxury car companies. Anything that's a large SUV or anything big is going to uh, be the catalyst for those profit margins that, that, that we're seeing. So I think that the fact that Americans want bigger cars, we've definitely seen that trend over the past 30 months when gas prices have been low. Um, and the fact that people have more money, so they have more disposable income to spend on these large SUVs. It seems like the gas price spike and recession is a, seems to be a distant memories in a lot of consumers' minds. Luxury SUVs have long been built by parent company Jaguar Land Rover, which owns the Range Rover brand, in what has become a popular segment among women and family buyers. The company is also launching two diesel-powered Range Rover models in North America in 2016, with new engines promising fuel savings of up to 30% compared with gasoline-powered models. So we for a long time weren't sure whether that's really the place we want to be as a true sports car and performance brand. However, our designers then took a look at it and says, we think we can actually build a performance SUV that is carrying the Jaguar brand proudly. So they came up with a formula that you see here behind me, which is really the world's first performance SUV. You don't sit on it, no you know, elevated driving position like in other SUVs, but it wraps around you. It's a true sports car feel with the practicality of an SUV. U.S. Fabry Auto Sales also soared to a 15-year high for the month in the latest sign of continued consumer confidence. Auto sales last month rose about 8 percent, helped by low gasoline prices, available and low interest credits, and higher wages. Luxury cars indeed. And that will be all on Business Incorporated. Many thanks for watching. We do hope you enjoy your Easter holidays. We'll see you next week. I am Bola Akiwale.